One of the questions I want to ask is just one, are there any big lessons you've learned or ahas? And then maybe, and you know, that's kind of on the positive side. Now on the flip side, are there any rules or guardrails that you have or anything that, I don't know, when something's happening, you kind of, your spidey senses go up and you say, okay, I don't do this, or this is not something to do. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I suppose like on the aha side of just like, uh, I think for me, it's a recognition of, um, how long it really takes to understand something. And even when you think you understand it, um, you probably need to spend more more time with it. I think that like, you know, just to borrow from some experience that I had as, as a journalist, I think that, you know, you could read a story and you could say, wow, like that, that, that reporter seems to know, like, it seems like they know a lot about this subject. But if you really enmesh yourself in something for so long where you become so kind of obsessed with it and you know every you think you know every in and out of something you can read that same story by that same reporter and realize oh actually they're full of shit and so i think what i've kind of realized is just like the companies that we're focused on it takes a lot of time to really know if what you're reading in the news or some analysis of it has credibility because i think that's ultimately what we're trying to do day to day is determine which pieces of input have credibility to our process and synthesizing that and curating it so that we let in the correct information and and keep out the bad information, uh, the false information. So I think that's sort of the aha is just, you know, maybe it's not the sexiest answer, but just like it takes a long time to really develop an expertise in something and feel confidence in it. And I'm certainly, you know, not there yet on a lot of areas that we study. You know, it's sort of like an active process. I'd say like on the challenging, like, you know, sort of avoid it side is we've talked about this before, you know, of this idea of like action bias of of feeling like just because you now know something and you spend time researching something that, wow, I have to, I have to do something. Um, And that could be defensive. It could be like, oh, I'm scared now because my thesis on something has changed and we should get rid of it. Or it could be like, wow, this thing is so great. We should invest in it. And I think the lesson learned is you know, uh, there's so much value to patience in this business that just slowing down not only the research process, but the actual like allocation process and the trading process is immensely valuable. Um, and I think some of the greatest investors just do nothing, right? Like that is such a hard thing to conceptualize, um, especially in our culture that values action and values doing things. But I think it's something that, you know, I've, I've, I've learned over time, or at least attempting to learn that like, sometimes really the best answer is just do nothing. Yeah. It it almost sounds like another way to maybe express that idea is if you just slow down the process, you immediately cross off a bunch of issues and risks and behavioral biases and things that are just not helpful. (laughs) And so just by reducing the speed, you're setting yourself up for success. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I'm, I'm guessing you probably are as well, but like just interested in like you know, behavioral psychology, behavioral economists, like I think that's some of the most, you know, valuable investing um, ideas are, you know, contained in books written by guys like, you know, Daniel Kahneman, that kind of, you know, genre. There's definitely like an element of like, you know, the the quantitative um, as being super important, but I think um, the behavioral elements to this business are bigger than everything. <laughs> 